Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Today we're going to dig into a more advanced topic, which is setting a VLAN dynamically for a client device that connects to your wireless network. There's a built-in way to do this in Unify using the built-in RADIUS server, but it has some shortcomings. The biggest shortcoming is that you need to define every client in its users list, and I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. So this video, we'll talk briefly about how to do it that way, but then we're going to dig in how to do it with, create a, a radius server with FreeNAS that will define a VLAN for any client that you define, but then every client that you don't define a user for will just get the default VLAN, which is generally what I want. And I guess I would explain why I want this. So I have some wireless cameras and the easy way to get them on a VLAN is to create an SSID, a separate SSID just for those, just for the cameras. But you can only put four SSIDs on an access point in Unify, and each one has a small performance penalty. So if you have a ton of clients and you don't care, and you have a lot of access points, then the simplest way to do this is just create another SSID and make a wireless net network and force every client that attaches to that wireless network to get a VLAN. But I don't want to do that. So we're going to walk out around, walk through how to not do it that way. We're going to do it a different way. Um, this is also a great way to test something. So I've mentioned a few times that I'm having some issues with my UDM Pro. And what this lets me do is have it so that my phone, which is a wireless client device can use the UDM Pro as its gateway without me dedicating um, access points in the house to the UDM Pro. So I can just use a dynamic, create, use a single SSID that everybody that I'm already using, create a radius account for my phone, and then assign the UDM Pro's internal network VLAN to my phone using that radius user. So let's dig in. So inside your wireless network is where you would set, have the uni, configure Unify to use a radius server for authentication or specifically Mac authentication, which is how you would assign an, a VLAN to the device. Uh, I already have my free radius profile set up here. But you can see that there are two profiles. One is the default, which is USG, and the other, which is the free radius profile that I created. Unify, if you have a USG, will allow you to run a radius server on it. And you configure that in the gateway radius and then just enable the radius server. You want to set a secret. The secret is like a, a big password. Um, you want that to be a really long, random string because that's what's used to encrypt the uh, data that goes between the devices requesting authentication and the radius server. The uh, actual client devices shouldn't ever get the uh, secret. So you turn that on here and interestingly enough the profiles are in a different place. They're in configuration profiles and radius so there's the default one which you can use. There's no, no reason why you can't use it if you want it to work the way that it works out of the box with um, USG and Unify, which is that you can just enable Radius for wired and wireless clients, and then you're done with that part. You do need to, of course, create accounts for each device then that will be using um, Radius Mac authentication. Um, you can also use the USG radius server for VPN authentication, which is what these other accounts are right here. Um, but you, you can see here that I have a couple, three different MAC addresses that I've set up to assign for authentication so that the username and the password is both the MAC without any minus signs or 
colons. That's the default configuration. But again, if you do it this way, you have to define a user for every device that's going to attach to this uh, wireless network. So if you have like 10 of them, it's not a big deal. If you have 20, it becomes a, a bigger maintenance issue. So as I mentioned, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it using free radius. So with free radius, you will need to have some kind of system somewhere uh, that you can run it on. You can do it on a Raspberry Pi. You can do it on a virtual machine. You could do it on kind of any, really anything that can run Linux. On Ubuntu, you'll install free, free radius using the uh, sudo apt install free radius and then hit enter. Um, I already have it installed on this box. I'm not going to run the command, but that's the command you would run on Ubuntu. It is slightly different depending on your distribution. So if you're using something that isn't Debian based, you'll want to go look up whatever the command is to install free, radi free radius. And when you're running on those non-Debian environments, the command is slightly different for how you run the server and how you ma manage some things. I'll put a link in the description below on documentation for installing it. Once you've installed it, you will want to escalate privilege, which is sudo su. Then just to make it a little easier, we're going to go to etc slash free radius 3.0 is a root folder. So looking around, there's some basic information here. Um, the thing that we'll want to touch first is this clients.conf, C-O-N-F file. So since we're escalated, we're fine. We just go nano or use whatever text editor you like. Clients. In, in this file, you will need to add a client definition for which will allow devices that like your access points to auth use this radio radius server as for authentication. The client configuration that I've put in here is a very simple one. It can get much more complicated, but for the for the purposes of this guide and my home network, I'm completely fine using it in this way, which is to allow any device on the 192.168.1. whatever x network to use this radius server for authentication. If I was more picky or I needed a more secure environment, obviously I would want to do this differently where I would create a client per device or in a much more restricted way. Um, I have four access points and I didn't feel like creating a client configuration per access point. But you can do that. That is a more secure way to do it. Just note that if you do it the way I did it, you will need to put a, your base IP in here and then also the net mask, which will be used to um, authorize the clients. And then, of course, your secret, it, with that su super secure key, you'll need to generate something long and complicated. And you'll need to make sure that you put it here so you also need to make sure that when you create your profile, your radius profile, when you put in the authentication server section, which is whatever the server is, which in this case, in my, on my network, it's 192.168.2.2, then you'll put your shared secret key in this section here. You just have to make sure that whatever you put here matches whatever you put in this secret section there. And then you name it, enable wired and enable wireless. Well, I guess you don't need to enable wired in this scenario, but if you want to use this for Mac authentication on a wired device, you would enable wired here as well. And then you give it a name and apply, and that's all there is to it for this profile. And that, that's what I have here is my free radius profile. Once that's done, you can exit out, and that won't take effect until you restart the um, free radius server. So the next step to getting this working is to define our users. And if we do an ls space hyphen l, we can see that there is a file in this directory, which is called users, but is actually symbolically linked to the file that it actually is, which is in mods config files authorize. So we can either mess with the authorized file directly, or we can just open up users. So this is where we put in our accounts, and this is where we make it so that free radius will accept anything that's not in, 
one of the defined clients. Uh, and that's in this section here. So as we can see here, we have some Mac addresses, which I've used the same format that Unify requires, which is that you have the Mac address with nothing in between, no, no hyphens, no colons. And the reason why I did it that way is simple. It's because I didn't want to mess with it versus if I wanted to change back and forth between Unify and free radius. I just changed the profile. I don't have to change any other configuration. So you have your the MAC address, then clear text password, and then the MAC address again. And then this is the important part. This tunnel type 13, tunnel medium type equals 6, and then tunnel private group ID equals the VLAN, which in this case for me is 3010 for these two, which are cameras. And then this last one here, which is my phone. So I put it on a separate VLAN that I have my cameras on. And then this bit here is where the magic happens when it comes to making so everything else just kind of gets authenticated. You notice here on this 13 and 6, this is the same configuration that if you were to create a radius user in Unify, you need the tunnel type to be 13 and you need the medium type to be six. That has to be the same, and then the VLAN ID is the same, it's just in a different order. So with that in place, let's stop our service. And we'll run free radius in the user space so we can see what's going on. To do that, you type in free radius space hyphen uppercase X, and then that runs the service. We can run a quick test to see what happens when we um, try to authenticate to our service. And the command to do that is rad test, and then the username, the password, the server to use, and then here's our client secret which in this case is testing one, two, three. So if I run this, we can see up here, I get a message that basically tells me that it worked because I get my tunnel type, my medium type, and my VLAN right in this section here. And then I also see them here. So that works brilliant. That works exactly the way that it would work in using the Unify stock configuration, but I don't want that, right? I want to make it so that anything that's not in that list also gets authentic or also passes authentication. So let's go back down here and let's just enter some gibberish. Hello world. Which is you'll take my word for it, I don't have a user called hello with a password of world. 127.0.0.1, testing, one, two, three. And here we can see it again, it allowed the authentication or it authorized the authentication request. Username, password, but I don't get any of that other stuff here. So it, in this case, we can see that it is working the way that I want it to work. Now let's look at my phone because that's that's the the real test. Okay, so here we have the uh, wireless configuration on my phone, and I have a OnePlus Seven Pro, and it has a neat feature, which is that it lets me pretend it to spoof a Mac basically. And right now, I have it set up so that it's sending the device's real Mac which is this you know, 9809CF value. You can see it here on the screen. And we can see that my IP address is 192.168.31.238. So what happens if I go up here and I just change the Mac to use a randomized Mac? So I save it, disconnects me, which is what should happen. And now I go to connect and we should see 
some chatter up here. And now we go, we can see my MAC address has changed. And we, more importantly, we can see that my IP address is now 192.168.1.234, which is brilliant. So now if I want to go back, I just edit the wireless setup again, change the device MAC, I save, and I connect. And we can see here that I got the data that I want to get. And then on my phone, I have the device MAC, and then I'm back into the IP space, into the 31 subnet. So that's all there is to it. It's super easy. I wish that Unify would, or Ubiquity, would allow me to have that level of flexibility with the um, stock out of the box radius configuration, but they don't. And I guess I kind of understand why they don't, but I do wish that it was available because then, you know, obviously I want to have to go through all this to, to make it work the way that I want it to work. One thing to note, to get out of the running free radius in the user space, you just want to press control C, which will exit. And then you want to make sure that you start the service, otherwise stuff's going to break. And then of course you want to get out of privilege. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments about this, drop them below, I'll get to them as soon as I can. Or if you want me to do something else, uh, some other kind of video about how to do something cool with Unify, drop that below too. And I will uh, see what I can do. Cheers.